Whoa. It's two hours from now, yes. All right. So, fair warning in advance, I suppose. This stream is going to be all about the Nintendo Direct that is coming up in a, in a couple hours from when I stream this, in case you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, so this is just gonna be all, everything that's gonna be said here for the most part is just gonna be speculation of, of that and it hasn't happened yet So if you haven't watched it yourself, I recommend you do that if you don't care then I apologize that you don't care But <laughs> I do care so I want to talk about it and you know, so that's just how she's gonna be So I'm just gonna you know, I'm just gonna hop uh, hop around. Uh, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing Nor do I remember what I'm supposed to be doing. I I, I got an idea for it now. I have a photo. I do. I do, yes. Hold on. Let me give that to Aya. So, chat. We got a 40... It's 40 minutes. 40 minute direct coming up. And obviously there's no guarantees on what's going to show up. But there seems... If I recall the tweet correctly... Here, take this. Ah! Uh, photo didn't save. Shit, alright, I'm backtracking. Uh, where was it again? I think it was fairly early into it, so let me just grab that again. I got it. It was near the start. Okay, I got it. That's a bit silly, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, whatever. Whatever, 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 whatever. Just everybody move out of the way. <laughs> Chad, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Shit. Right, now, the, the tweet. The tweet mentioned something about upcoming releases for this winter season, right? So, there we go. There we go. So, I assume most of what we're going to get is going to be stuff that's coming out uh, this year. This coming season, aside from Pokemon, obviously, because Pokemon, Pokemon's like a special child, I suppose. And Nintendo doesn't even really talk about it anymore. They just kind of like Game Freak do whatever they want to it. And then Game Freak does handles the announcements. Pokemon's so big that it gets its own separate special uh, big boy time. Maybe Nintendo just doesn't want the, their gacha games to be included in their shit. Who knows? Anyway, regardless of how I, how I feel about it. There's a good chance we're not going to see anything related to, uh... <clears throat> we're not going to see anything related to Pokemon. I'm... Mountain. There we go. And that's okay, because Pokemon's got its own Direct. And that game is coming out in November, so... Huh, maybe, maybe they should do something about that, huh? Alright, here, take this. Broken Trap. Oh! Oh, that wasn't number two, that was number seven! All right, sure. Two weeks until Metroid. Don't worry, they're gonna go, they're gonna drop the ending uh, in this direct, so you won't even need to play it anymore. Aren't you excited? <laughs> Not even gonna have to play the game anymore. You got the the entirety of the story all right there for you. Huh? Are the are there two rabbits? Rabbit ears look like feathers. Wait, was I really right at the boss the whole time? Oh, I shouldn't have stopped then. The second rabbit might be on their side, so let's beat them all together. People say if you run after two rabbits, you will catch it either. Sunny, the proverb is not for this context. Anyway, Sunny Luna, let's make a surprise attack not fail again. Okay, it's my fault if I get caught due to my figure. I try not to make any sound. Let us go. Let us go, ouch. Well, it's not your fault. Then, when the enemy is weakened, bust the demon. What happened? Alright, now let's watch the game play itself for a little bit. And if I win, I win. And if I lose, I lose. <laughs> Great. I couldn't do anything about it! Do I have enough Phoenix Downs? Maybe I need to actually do some tactics menuing. Oh, we'll worry about it if I lose. Alright, we'll worry about it if I lose. Huh. 
Pokemon Unite. I don't follow Pokemon Unite. I don't care about Pokemon Unite. I don't like the genre. The genre confuses me because people talk about League of Legends like it's one of the greatest sins of mankind and then continue to play it every day of their life. And it's just like, oh, okay. That's the part about League of Legends I don't fully understand. So when they were like, hey, now we'll do it with Pokemon, I was like, oh, wow, I am... I'm even more excited for that. Surely I am. That was not the case. I, I don't give a rat's ass about it. My friends played it for a bit. I don't know if they still do. All I remember about it is what my friends my friends told me that Zapdos was dumb and I was like oh okay I didn't even know Zapdos was in the game it's the sunk cost fallacy man sometimes you just gotta you gotta you gotta get over it I guess now I know obviously that's easier said than done but Fire Emblem Heroes is a game that I put way more time in than I care to admit and I stopped playing it long long ago I couldn't keep doing it Sometimes you gotta sit down and really look at yourself and be like, do I really want to keep playing this right now? Is this really a thing that I want to invest my time in? Something that I wake up every day and go, wow, that was an awful experience. I go on the internet and the internet's like, yeah, you shouldn't play this game because it's an awful experience. And then continue to play this game despite it being an awful experience. Anyway, I won when I probably shouldn't have, so nice. We won the play tag. It's regrettable, I didn't think that I lost a game. In the name of the moon, I shall punish you! Oh, I forgot the line. What was that? Luna forgets signature phrase. Anyway, I apologize for any inconvenience my rabbits have caused. Your rabbits? If you apologize, you should stop it from the beginning. I'll scold Tay for it later. Then tell your master that Rayson was also part of the mischief. Hey, that's... I just tell the truth. Is there any problem? As you sow, so you reap. By the way, why did you come to the bamboo grove here? We have no business in the bamboo grove, but we want to go to the land beyond here. Speaking of which, why is the direction... Is it the direction of the swamp? Yep. It seems that there are many dangerous creatures living there, so be careful. Please ask me anything about bamboo grove, I can help you with it. Okay, thanks. Tay, say something as well. There are traps on the north road, but I think it's okay for you guys who have come this far. I apologize for my co-worker. <laughs> We're off with caution. Then let's go back to the place with the high steps. I have a little idea. And I- Whoa! Bro! Alright. I apologize for Tay this time. you have any questions about Bamboo Grove, you're gonna tell us. I can't really approve you as a guardian. From what kind of perspective, Luna? You guys are pretty smart for fairies. I won't lose next time. Bring it anytime. Stop provoking, Sunny. Maybe I should just jump down there. Be all good and good to go. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think they. I, this game. I didn't update it, but the, some of the some of the machine translation text has been a bit rough. All right. Well, I won, and now I need to go to where uh, uh, here. I think. Star's got an idea. So what's an idea? If we can't jump over it, we can climb the bamboo. From here, like that. That doesn't work. Seems that this has been crafted to prevent mischief. This is unexpected. If so, why don't we just ask the rabbit? She told us to tell me anything. Let's do so. She might tell us something. You tried to climb the wall texture. You poor fool. They have wings. Well, remember, the bamboo forest is easy to get lost in, even if you... you I, I don't... I don't... I, I don't fucking know. What do you want me to say? Hold on. Elixir... Oh, wow. Okay, Phoenix Tails. Not bad. Bunny... So, firstly, can I ask one question? Absolutely, anything is fine. Is there any way for fairies to climb high steps? Mmm, rabbits can climb three steps and some can climb four steps, but fairies are two steps side by side. For example, with the help of a rabbit, can we do that? Rayson, you have the tail of the rabbit, which you said were you were studying the other day. Oh, yeah. Well, if you equip the tail of the rabbit, you should be able to get the same jumping power as a rabbit. However, however, the real tail is not here. Seems to be a troublesome story again. Where can we get it? 
You should be able to get Kesselon on the on the south coast. If you have some of these, I can synthesize them in theory. I'm sorry, but we can't leave here right now. We just have to get Kesselon. There's one more thing I have to tell you guys. What? If I remember correctly, the road to the south should be blocked now. This prevents foreign enemies from evading the, from the coast. I will give you a note that describes how to unlock the blocking system. So we follow us right here, and I'm joking on my own saliva. We don't follow us right here, then we can go to the, the beach, yep, yeah, right? Sorry to trouble you, but please do your best. We gotta work hard, just wanna get wanna get out of this trap bamboo grove a sap. Rayson's note and book of Boonie. Rabbit tail. Jump over three feet. Speed plus 100. EXP gain plus. That's a good fucking item, isn't it? Gotta go lightning fast. Hold on, there was a chest or something I missed over here. I think. So now we're gonna play the video game again. Whee! Uh, so, back to the direct. I don't think we're gonna get Breath of the Wild news, because I think Onuma said that we're not getting anything else this year. Maybe I'm wrong, and we are getting something, which would be kinda cool. But I'm not really in any rush for that game. I'm gonna be honest with you, Chad, I'm not as hyped for Breath of the Wild 2 as other people are. If only because Breath of the Wild 1 is a game that makes me interested, and I understand its appeal, but I get bored really easily when there's nothing to do. There is so much open land in that game, and it's great, but I, I'm not really a fan of it. Because I get bored really easily when nothing's going on, and you can spend hours just doing fuck all. And if you have fun with that, that's great. Because there's plenty of fuck all to do. But after like an hour, I'm I'm already thinking about how I wanna I wanna stop. Especially if I'm on a fetch quest. The last time I played uh when I played what do you call it? Breath of the Wild, I was looking for the Zora armor. And I, I found like one piece of it and the game was like, better go find the rest, jackass. And I was like, alright, I'm looking, where is it? And I I, I didn't I didn't find it. I think I found one piece of it, and then they were like, Oh yeah, so now if you want to get the Zora armor, you have to find the seven different uh, st uh, stones that are scattered throughout the, the Zora area. Go read them all, and they'll tell give you a hint, I guess, maybe. And I was like, oh, cool. I'll get right on that tomorrow. And tomorrow never came. Well, I'm still winning, so clearly my strategy is effective enough. However, when I run out of Phoenix Downs, there will be a problem. Yes. There you go. There's a weird, there's a weird balance you gotta strike with those things. I did one dungeon in Breath of the Wild. I did the, I did the elephant dungeon, and I kind of, Chad, I kind of hated it. I didn't really enjoy it that much. So there there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot to the game I ended up really just being super excited for. Some of the side quests in that game were absurd though. Like one of the earliest side quests you can get is just like, oh man, I wish I had a I wish I had a cookbook from the the chefs of Hyrule Castle. And it's like, wow, you know, I just got off the Great Plateau, and I have three hearts, maybe four. And this dude's like, man, for 20 rupees, you should invade Hyrule Castle and find me a cookbook. It's like, hmm, yeah, maybe, perhaps I will do that. The reward... The reward for getting, uh... Doing these side quests is almost never worth it. I went to a rest stop and some dude was like, hmm, man, I sure wish I could see the Master Sword. And I was like, bro, I have six hearts, chill. Like, <laughs> that's an easy quest to fulfill, for sure. But I was just like, okay, dude, why do you, what, what, what kind of quest is this? Chot, how, how get? Chot, how? Also breakable weapons. Yeah, I hate that shit. I do not like that. My issue with that came from the fact that I, I did a... I spent a long time trying to fight a guardian in a trial. And then I broke all my items off it and it was barely even half dead. And I was just like, yep. Punished for what here exactly? 
Why did I get punished? I was playing well, and then, oops, sorry, you're out of items. Better luck next time. How do I... How do I? Am I... Can I not do that right now? Breath of the Wild is... I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's a bad game by any means. Obviously, it's not a bad game at all. But it's not the kind of game that I really like. It's kind of a weird Zelda game, too. When you think about it. It's a weird Zelda game. Do, 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 do. I don't know where I'm going, by the way. She said go south, but it, there's, it's locked. Uh, I can't go up there. South from the forest? Or south from the school? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. Dream. <laughs> Great. So we're definitely getting more dread information because dread information is dread information is to be expected. Read the note? Oh, I, I thought the note was a key item. I'll read it. Thank you, Rhombus, for the resub. Uh, no, not quite sure what else we're gonna have, though. Chat, was there anything in the last direct that was mentioned to be coming out soon? Like this, this year-ish? Where, where's the note? Items? Desert sand. What? Exists whole lot in the sand desert. Okay, what? Okay. Um. Important items. Grayson's note. Ten seconds on X in mystery circle. Once you release the lock, proceed carefully. 10 seconds on X in mystery circle. 10 seconds on X in mystery circle. Ten seconds on X in mystery circle. What does that even mean? Oh, right, Mario Party. Yeah, right, I was excited for that. I completely fucking forgot. Ding, ding, ding. Magic ball, magic ball. This will be the last direct of the year. If this is the last direct of the year, then we have to get a Smash character because the holiday season's coming up, right? And the holiday season's coming up, that means they want to put out a game. You know how Nintendo is. They love to have a bundle available for Christmas time of a really uh, well-selling game and a system. So... Having, uh, having all the Smash characters out is incentive for people to buy it. This, this crash mesh. Oh yeah, there's Advance Wars, too. Would you, would you classify that as a new game? Would you classify Advance Wars as a new game? Because it's, it's a, I mean, it's definitely a revamp of the old stuff. But is it, is it really new? Ding, ding. Alright, we're good. I guess it's new enough, considering the, the history of Advance Wars. Contest of Wits. Uh. Did I do it? Did I do it? I don't think I did it. Streamer injured. 
This isn't the right area. Oh, streamer. What are you doing? Sploot 3, yeah, if you're excited for it, have fun. I have not really cared about Splatoon at all in the entirety of its existence. I'm actually pretty impressed that it took off as well as it did. It didn't seem like a bad idea, mind you, but Nintendo's... Nintendo's new IPs that they try to launch every now and again... They're always so strange. That's all. Like, they never really seem to catch on, so it's... Splatoon's probably, like, the newest IP of theirs to really, like, take, uh, take off, huh? This is great. Potential microtransactions? Don't worry, Game Freak's not handling it. Poor ARMS. Well... To be fair on that regard, ARMS is now in Smash Brothers, and Min Min is, uh, certainly a character, <laughs> to say the least. What about Pikmin 4? Are you not excited for no news on that? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've come to terms with that one. Pikmin 4, man, it's coming. It's on the way. I, I called Reggie himself, he told me. What do you mean Reggie doesn't work in Nintendo anymore? Hello? That's not true, Reggie is Nintendo! He's still the boss to me! I hate this. Mostly because I seem to be doing- I don't really need to do this as well as I am. But I am because there's enemies all over the fucking place. He's still there! Do you think Reggie would have that information, though? Oh, whoops. Like, how much information do you think Reggie had on upcoming titles before he retired? Do you think he's out of the loop now of everything new? Maybe he knows the, uh, maybe he knows the current state of, uh, of Pikmin 4. Obviously, he's probably under an NDA on that stuff. If, if for anything he does know, he can't just talk about. But I do wonder how much, like, information he would have, uh... Or how much knowledge he would have of upcoming titles that no one else would. Even though he's no longer working for the company. Uh... Uh... What? You can't even get through this. What? Oh. Ah, uh, th uh, there we go. That's just for the treasure chest. Alright, alright, alright. Ringleader's base. Am I here yet? Is this the right spot? Ah! Mystery circle. No? Here. One, two, three, four. Stand on X. Which one? There's eight of them! Ah! Alright, I'm waiting. Barricade removed. Something happened? I feel like something has moved in a distant place. Read the note. Let's proceed carefully. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait, 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 are you telling me I have to do this again? No, 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 no. Once you release the lock, proceed, uh, cafefully. Now you just need to puzzle there. You know I didn't save any of the screenshots. I didn't save a single one of them. La -di -da -di -da 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 -da. La I'm sure I can handle it. 
I could just watch the previous VOD. Oh, you don't understand. That shit took me forever to do that anyway. I would have to jump all around through it. Oh my god, Lois! Alright, let me see. That was weird. Ding, ding, ding. Go, go, go. Chat. I have a question. Did anyone play that robot game that they released? What was it called? Uh, Desus... Des Desus... Ma Machina? You know the one. The one that kept, like, advertising all the goddamn time. Oh, sweet. Yeah, the mech game. I, I saw it, uh, I went to Best Buy a while back, and, uh, I didn't even realize Great Ace Attorney was available on Switch in English. I saw that there. But I saw that game on Switch, and I was like, oh, fuck, right, yeah, that game. They, like, for the entire year, for the entire year, the Nintendo Direct always had a section, like, dedicated to that game. Damon X Machina. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 it was in every direct. They had like a beta testing, uh, a demo, the whole nine yards. And then I, I didn't even hear anything after it came out. Now, I don't watch a lot of people on Twitch to begin with, but like, no one I watched even talked about that game at all. No one played it, no one, anything. I completely forgot it existed until I saw it there. I was like, oh, fuck, right, yeah, that game. Like, it seemed like Nintendo was really pushing that game, and then it just, it came out, and that was it. Astral Train 2? Well, Astral Train had Platinum Games' name behind it, and Vinny did play it, but I didn't, I didn't watch Vinny play it. I just kind of, that game just looked cool to me, and then I didn't do anything with it at all, and then I was, I was done, and then it was over. only average reviews so it wasn't it wasn't that's probably the worst fate is when you make a game that's mediocre because then it, like I mean I guess no one wants to make a bad game but a bad game is more memorable than a than a mediocre game but I guess if you're trying to make more games you probably want a track record of mediocrity over a track record of what the fuck are you doing in this industry right Nintendo is a publisher, so it's gotta. Now, I understand what you mean by that. That makes sense. But, I guess, I can't, oh, I can't think of any examples specifically from Nintendo. The only example I could think of is from Bethesda. Bethesda's marketing department on Evil Within 2 was not, not in the office for the entirety of its existence. The Evil Within 2 came out, it was revealed in a, 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 B, a Bethesda showcase they were just like, oh shit, Evil Within 2, and then there was absolutely zero marketing for it, and then it came out, and that was it. I was like, what the fuck with that stuff? You want good ideas with bad execution, then bad ideas all around. Yeah. Yeah. If a game's bad, just because of, like, a lack of experience, but it has good issues, then people can forgive that. 
But when a game makes egregious changes that are just, and just like uncomfortable gameplay, and then it's like, please. And then if you're an asshole about it, as a developer, then no one will have any sympathy for you at all. <laughs> at all. Don't be a prick, essentially. That doesn't sound like uh, very difficult advice to follow, but some people really got their heads so far up their asses that they're, uh, they're, they're doing a loop. I can see the path in the bamboo, and I'm gonna get it. But first, the rabbit must die. Don't be dookie nookie. Evil Within 2 is a good game, though I might still like the first one more. I actually agree with you. But I haven't played the Evil Within 1 in a while. Evil Within, Evil Within 1, to me, started off really, really strong. But by the end of the game, a lot of it was very, very frustrating. Because so many things insta-killed you. Because fuck you, I guess. Evil Within 2? Evil Within 2 didn't make a lot of sense to me, overall. But, like, I still enjoyed playing it. <clears throat> oh, new shit. Oh, sweet! New shit! Ding, ding, ding. Gotta make sure to heal. Gotta be prepared to fight Magic Ball. The strongest fucking enemy in the entire world. Go, go, go! I didn't play the DLCs in the Evil Within 1. I, uh, I had that... I had that game in a time frame where I didn't, like, really have access to DLC. Same with Metal Gear Revengeance. I didn't play the DLC for that either, because it was just like, I didn't want to buy a, mic a Microsoft points card for Xbox Live Arcade, whatever the fuck it's called. And I, I just never played the Jetstream Sam DLC, even though I'm pretty sure it's pretty good. Fight me, root the bag. Evil Within 2 is a very complicated mess. But it's a fun one. I just remember that game promotion. That game's promotion was about, uh, was like a, a team up between the, the minds of, like, it was like the minds of Silent, uh, Resident Evil and the, the music of Silent Hill. And it was like, whoa, those, those two horror titans coming together to make a video game. And then video game was uh, pretty, pretty good. Uh, that was pretty good. I liked it. Game Freaks RPG? Which one? Harmonite? Oasis? Which one? Which grossly mediocre R RPG are you talking about that Game Freak released before they put out another Pokemon game? <laughs> Town? Oh god. Man? Pokemon, you get that Lily out of here. <laughs> Game Freak has a number of different RPGs, yes. Uh, I believe Oasis, Harmonite, and Town are the, the most recent three. But every now and again, they release a, a game that isn't Pokemon, and it's, you know, they're Game Freak, so people are like, oh shit, Game Freak. But then, I don't, I think Harmonite was, wasn't bad. I never played it myself. Pretty sure there was also Pokemon mixes in it. But yeah, as far as I know, Oasis and, and Town especially were just kind of like, eh. Little Town Hero. That's also the game that's OST was composed by Toby Fox, right? Toby Fox is the was did one of the one of the songs in Sword and Shield as well. He did the Battle Tower music. Little Town RPG did come out and it was bad. What was bad about it? The OST was the only redeemable part. That's because the OST was the only part Game Freak didn't have a hand in. <laughs> Oasis was disappointing, but the character designs were great. I actually don't remember anything about it at all. I just- I barely remember the name. I was like, oh yeah, shit, that's one. Toby who? I don't know. Never met him in my life. Why does Game Freak have Toby Fox on speed dial? Anyone else wonder about that? Why the fuck does Game Freak have Toby Fox on the line to compose music for them? <laughs> That's so weird. 
Hey, Toby, we're making a game. You want to do the music, the entire soundtrack for it? Yeah, well, you know, I'm working on Delta Rune too. I guess, no, no, bro. We'll pay you big, big stacks. Little town hero. Come on, compose that music. Oh, but Delta Rune too. Uh, it's coming, coming soon. Dude's wild. I'll never understand him. He, he drops some, uh, some banger video games though, doesn't he? He just paced through the wall to drop some music, so the red telephone between US and Russia. Shows up, composes music, leaves. Refuses to elaborate any further. And his music is good. His music is quite good. I forgot that was a group heal. Toby Fox has met a few people now. Oh, well. That's crazy. The dude, uh... He's just, he's, he's met a lot of, met a lot of influential people. He's met Sakurai, he's met Zun. I mean, I say influential, but like, those are, in, in my world, those two are pretty big figures. So, him having met both of them is like, yo, that's sick. Hmm. Other than his music, I forgot he was a game dev. Really? <laughs> I mean, his music's really good, but he's 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 the brain of uh, Undertale and Delta Rune. So. Ding ding ding. Sakurai and Toby hung out for the Smash stuff. That's so cool. I mean, he brought a. Uh... He brought John Undertale into the game as a me costume. Could you believe that? I don't think anyone could have saw that coming. Like, how how did to how did Toby Fox just make a uh, show up, make a game, have it be a universal success, and then suddenly the funny haha -ha man is suddenly in Smash Brothers as a me outfit? It's like what? How'd that happen? Sans the meme man. What is that? Oh, it's a butterfly. Thought it was like a gooey face. <clears throat> he has to have met someone at Game Freak, yeah. Cause like, how else would he have? Why else would he be doing the whole OST of a fucking one of their RPGs, right? And he even got a he even got an official Pokemon song. That is wild to me. That is absolutely wild to me that he was he. He got to make an official track for a Pokemon game. Alright, here we go. I, for a second, I mistook Toby Fox for Phil Fish. I don't know who Phil Fish is, but I like his name. It's kind of funny he works in Nintendo since he did the thing that is Spies. Yeah, it's true. Toby Fox's first, uh, real, like, thing was an Earthbound Halloween hack, so... The fact that he made that to begin with is, like, kind of his jump start, and then all these years later, Game Freak's like, Yo, you wanna, like, do some official work with us? That's insane. You think Nintendo would look at him and be like, What's that? You made a ROM hack of a game that is over 20 years old and we refuse to release on other platforms? Uh, that's a ban. Get out of here. Get out of my office right now. You will never work in this industry ever. Aside from using Megalovania, I don't think he wants to remember the Halloween hack. Well, I'd believe it because when you start out any creative, uh, when you start on any creative journey, I suppose, I don't really know if journey is the right word for it. You feel real proud of your first work. You feel really proud of your first work, but as the years go by and you look back at it, you're, you start you start to feel a little bit... You start to cringe a little bit, that's all. Like... Your first, your first artwork, your first uh, song you composed, all this stuff... All this stuff, it's like... You look at it, you did, you did so much work, you put so much work into it, and you're really proud of it. But the more you, uh, the more you do it, and, like, the better you get, and eventually you get to a point where you can look back and be like, Oh, I made that? That was the first thing I made? And you look at it, and you're like, Oh, Jesus, what have I done? 
Book of Scout. Star's Scout ability was... Change skills to see the state of the enemy. Bring... O o please bring only those who can handle it. Let me make that, I suppose. Uh, Scout. Glass Ball. Cool. There you go. <clears throat> Halloween is hack is a hell of a first work. I don't know anything about it. I, I just, uh... The, I, I feel like the only reason anyone knows much about the Halloween hack is because every single time someone uh, mentions Megalovania and how they like that, that song, someone has to jump in and be like, um, did you know actually that song wasn't first used in Undertale? It was first used in, in here, and it's just like, alright, well, now I know it exists. I don't know anything about that, that uh, ROM hack, but I do know that the music was in it for that exact reason. Because I was like, Sans theme is pretty cool. That was a cool theme. And then I was told that, hey, it actually was used in this game as well. And I was like, huh, neat. Why is there a Kadama? Haul an ass. That's Kessalon. No, that's Kadama. <laughs> no, that's Kadama. You can't just make up names. Can't just make up names like that. Someday, when I figure out how to play this game, I'll do better. I'll figure out how to play this game. But until I lose, I don't have to. So there you go. First time I heard Megalovania was part of Homestuck. Yeah, it was there too. It's a good song. It is a very good song. I just, it's just a meme, that's all. But I swear, it's a good song. Oh, I might die. What is that? Magic fairy. Oh, I thought it was a bunny spirit. We're fine. See, we're fine. See? We're fine. Uh, do it again. Where am I going? Where am I going? Oh. Where, where, so what, I have to beat him? Wait, where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's freaking out. All right, no problem. All right, I got him, no problem. Oh, come back. What? Come back! Please cease. Got him. Stop! How do I get him? How, how do I get him? I can't corner him. He's too fast. <laughs> I gotta get him stuck. Top right corner. Top right corner. There. Oh, I see. I see, I see. I can't stop him. I got it. Oh, there we go. Got him. Kesselon. 
All right, we got it. Easy. Go, 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 go. Necessary to compose rabbit's tail. There you go. Well, that wasn't so bad. Look at that. He didn't even fight back. He didn't even fight back. But there's still other areas, so I'll check them out first. Oh, it's just his whole ass body. That's all. That's only Kesselon the first. Oh, I need more? Oh. That would explain the other areas. All right, here we go. Chat, the only thing I really remember about Deltarune's release is that apparently Toby Fox, like, uh, credited Toho as a, a source of inspiration. And that was enough to make people go crazy. That, uh, that, was, that was kinda, that was kinda weird. Like he, like, it's like he said, he said the line, Bart. I don't know, I don't really understand why that was such a big deal. It's like, I like to, I, I credit Toho as a source of inspiration. Like, oh, that's cool. But some people were like, holy shit, I can't believe Toby Fox just acknowledged Toho in, in his, in, in the game there, outside the game. That's crazy, that's insane, I can't believe it, Toby. And it's like, well, I mean, he, he's just a dude. At the end of the day, Toby Fox is just a dude, and he likes different things. I don't really understand why you're gonna make a big deal. He's like, yeah, this inspired the game. Also, I'm sure people already knew that anyway from his previous works. I don't know. Now, I say this, I say this to someone who doesn't know or care about celebrity culture of any kind because I think it's kind of weird. So, you know, when stuff like that happens, I, I, I don't really see what's... I don't really see why people, like, go crazy about it. Anything related to the royal family, like, in, in the real life, just confuses the shit out of me. Like, you remember when What's-Her-Face and, and Fuckhead McGee got married? The royal wedding? And it was like, oh shit, every news outlet's talking about it. Every TV program is covering it. People are getting taking days off their work to watch it. And it's like, who the fuck are these people? Who cares? People in niche communities are really desperate for representation. See, you're not wrong, but at the same time, some people in the niche communities also cannot stand the idea of other people learning about what they like and refuse anyone from enjoying it because they don't they don't they don't enjoy it as much as them and they will never enjoy it as much as them so then because of that they should never be able to enjoy it period it's crazy if i knew about a direct that was coming up ahead of time then i would have probably asked for time off just to make sure or maybe not even time off just a shift to make sure i can actually watch it but if a direct comes up and I have to work, I have to work. I'm not, I'm not doing, like, <laughs> I'm not ditching that. I never did that. But yeah, it's just like, it's just celebrity culture in general. Same with internet celebrities too. It's weird. It's weird and it confuses me. So I don't, I don't bother with it. Wait, where'd the Kadama fucker go? Where'd you go? Hmm. Alright, I need to get him trapped somewhere, so I need to figure out where that is. No, it's definitely cool that Toby Fox, there it is, uh, you know, attributed uh, Toho to as an inspiration. That's really cool to see, for sure. But I just don't understand why it gets blown out of proportion. Oh, I got him. Whoops. Alright. There's a- okay, so he's got a friend. Which means I need to kill us. Did you just use a fucking elixir? 
Pro. What? I... That's it? He's just gonna spam Elixir? Will he heal himself? Doesn't seem like it. Uh oh, I'm gonna die. See you later. So I need to... I basically just need to run my tactics again. But I need to change the tactics to focus on the higher HP one, not the not the lower HP one. In other words, I am in a new trouble. Ding ding ding. You played for seven hours. Do not reward me for that, please. Um tactics. Tactics! Lowest HP enemy. We're gonna change that to highest. HP enemy. Highest max HP enemy. There we go. And then, how do I switch? There we go. Lowest HP, highest max HP, highest max HP, highest max HP. All right. I have now solved the problem. Watch. Hmm. Ding, 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 go, go, go. I'm not really a fan of gatekeeping, but I do think that there are some instances where I, it is, uh, it is applied. If you look at the current state of uh, the entirety of video games. I don't agree with keeping people out of something because they don't enjoy it as much as you. I think that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. What I do agree with is that keeping people who do not care about the source material or anything like that at all and only seek to change... They only seek to change the, the entirety of said series to better fit their beliefs but don't actually give a shit about any of it at all are the ones that I don't want to, I don't want to deal with. Those people are annoying. Hey, this tall thing's really cool, but it would be even cooler if it appealed to my political uh, standpoint. So uh, you should do that. And that's it. That's that's their only contributing factor. That's the kind of shit I don't want to see. Keep your politics out of it. It's a fucking video game series, man. Not everything needs to be social commentary. I can just watch bouncy fairies bounce and have fun. I don't need to. I don't need to worry about the fucking struggle of that. And it's not like Tall doesn't have elements to it that are political, but they're written in universe in a way that is interesting and engaging, and not just a, a social commentary. Because I don't need social commentary in video games. I, I really don't. You get enough of that shit in the real world on a daily fucking basis. Why do you insist on including it in our hobbies? <clears throat> that kind of gatekeeping just sounds like trying to keep away problematic people in general. Yeah, I guess it's... You could, you could, I mean, I still think you could call it gatekeeping, though, because it's still... The, the end result... The end result and the, the means are still pretty much the same, but if you don't consider that gatekeeping, then... Yeah, I suppose. But that's just my opinion on it. That's my opinion on it. Feel free to agree, disagree, I don't, I don't fucking care. But I just, you know, I just don't like when... I don't like when people who don't give a shit about what they're actually, like, the, the series is, show up and try to change it for the better, quote-unquote, and then it just... You know, it's not like... It's not like Zen's ever gonna listen to that, necessarily, but you see it with, uh... You see it with Western developers a lot, and it's really unfortunate.
video games and uh, in fiction and stuff in general is a form of escapism. It's a form of escapism from the real world. And I don't think there's anything wrong with making stories that with like political elements to them. But when you make stories that are so obviously, uh, so obviously reflective of current, uh, current year, like what we're going through right now, it's just, it's just tiring. It's really tiring. How many Phoenix Tails do I got? Not enough! <laughs> Not enough! My, uh... I need to do something about this. Hold on, I need to make a new tactics. Highest speed, heal. Phoenix Town. I want you to cast Revive instead. Do that for me, would you? I run out of Phoenix Tails. I need to. I need to not lose those. There we go. All right. Sorry to get a little depressing on that chat, but it is what it is, right? It is what it is. There's not much you can really do about it, but I don't really. I don't like bringing it here, so. I don't like seeing it in other things either. Could set up another set of tactics. Psh. Too much work. I don't have time to think. Late attack. I only have time to press the button and then watch the magic unfold. That's all. <clears throat> oh, there he is. Alright, I got him, I got him. I was gonna try and save there. Oh, Jesus. Alright. Alright, Ponga. Go, 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 go! So, Ponga will heal anyone. Oh, boy. Ponga will heal anyone that is, uh, injured. Oh, can I win this? Because he has infinite elixirs, I guess. Uh, Rive of Spell ain't gonna cut it. It ain't over. It ain't over. It ain't over! It's over. <laughs> Shit. It was over. Uh, okay. So what do we do here? How do I stop this? I guess... How do I- how do I make new tactics? Shit. Chot, how- how- how do? Uh, A, edit, A, arrow, exchange, B, arrow, edit, arrow, start. How do I make new tactics? Either go farm burbs, phoenix tails, or sell junk to buy more. Which birds? Need to buy pages. Oh. Where- where birds? I'm wearing tango wings, that's about it though. Blue birds. Uh, in the mountains. Oh, we're- We're farming again? Foot of mountain. Oh, you just wanted to say feet, chat. I know how you work. Alright, where are they? We're looking for birds! We're looking for birds! Where are the birds? Here they are. Hey, 
And now, we play the game. Anyway, chat, I kind of diverse from what I wanted to talk about anyway, because I just want to talk about Nintendo Direct. I didn't want to talk about the way the world sucks. Please turn on auto tactics. How do I do that? What is auto tactics? Is that real? Options. Okay, hold on. I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it. Where? Options. Settings. Battle speed, text speed, cursor, keep tactics. Keep tactics on off after battle. Ah! Ah! Alright, there we go. Will that do it? Will that do it? Ding 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 ding. Mm. I want to see more about the one they leaked. I don't know what that is. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I mean, we'll see it. I'll see it in a, uh, under an hour anyway, but don't tell me. I wanna... I'm looking forward to it. Because the thing is, they give us... They give us 40 minutes, right? 40 minutes of a direct is always a great number, but... I won't lie, whenever a game comes up that I genuinely don't care about... I will look to the timer and be like, how much time is left? <laughs> Every fucking time. They'll be like... Every time they're like, here, take a look at this, and it's something I don't care about, I'll be like, alright, how much time is left in the direct? Alright, if this trailer goes on for another three minutes, there's still time for- There's still time for stuff I care about. The worst feeling in the world is when you know that a trailer is going to go on and on and on, and then it finally ends, and then they start talking about the game, and you're like, it's been seven minutes, please! There's only 40 minutes in this direct! I can't sit here forever! They put a bunch of games up on the Japanese Switch schedule site, yeah. Well, uh, I saw a mention that like they leaked it themselves, so that would make the most sense. But well, you know, let's we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Square Enix section, but it's 40 minutes and 20 minutes to Guardians of the Galaxy. That is literally what happened. That is literally what happened. They 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 started with Guardians of the Galaxy, and it just did not fucking stop. It just kept. Going and going and going. Where? Twenty minutes of oh oh I did get that. Never mind. There's a rare bird up there. Why did I even battle these slimes? Kingdom Hearts Four, Final Fantasy Sixteen. Oh, you know what the ice- the cherry on top of that whole shebang was? Do you remember what came after Guardians of the Galaxy? It was a- it was like a minute long, uh, video that was like, Oh, by the way, we're like HD porting Final Fantasies 1 through 6, and you can get them. And then after that, Marvel's Avengers DLC. Oh my god. Square Enix? Please. Please. Make better game. They got that sweet, sweet Marvel money. And they're- they're definitely getting their most out of it, but like... Man. They talked about their Japanese IPs for like three minutes. That's a generous estimate. <laughs> Yeah, we got, uh, we got like 25 minutes plus of Marvel, 10 minutes of Life is Strange, uh, 2 minutes of Final Fantasy, and then 3 minutes of, oops, sorry, we started late. Square, what are you doing? What are you doing, Square? But it's okay, because when the next game comes out and we can kill Chaos with blood crystals, uh, everyone will forget this little fiasco, and everybody will love Square again. Trust me, Nintendo gets away with this shit every single fucking year. There's no way that uh, Square can't as well. Chot, why am I in a hole? Why am I down here? 
Final Fantasy Dark Souls sounds amazing on paper. I don't disagree. I don't know if what that game is, is Dark Souls. But I do think that it's funny. The dude's just, he's just pissed. He just wants nothing to do. He wants nothing out of life at all but to kill chaos. And it's like, you know what, dude? You go right ahead. You, you, you fucking do that. <laughs> and the blood crystal attacks were kind of cool. Hmm. <clears throat> These games look like shit, Nintendo's losing their touch, buys it anyway. Yeah, they're, they're, they're telling the cashier that while they're paying for the game. Nintendo, man, I swear to God. They could shit on a plate and sell it to you for 60 bucks. They really could. And I, I say this as a fan of Nintendo, man. I like Nintendo stuff. They got some damn good games, but holy shit. Sometimes they look at their clientele and they play a game of how much can we get away with and the answer is a lot It is often a lot and that is not good. I don't like that Please drop blue feathers. I need them. Thank you When did it all go wrong when did it all go wrong? I wouldn't say their quality has not improved in forever, but I'm actually having a pretty hard time remembering when games came out. I like, uh, Odyssey was a lot of fun. I really liked Odyssey. Do I have good gear on or EXP boosting stuff for that boss battle? Uh... Do I? How would I know? How would I know what I have equipped in my game? I have mouse ears and crow wings. And the ornaments. EXP gain. Uh. EXP. Well, uh, there you go. There you go. Make some better accessories. Okay. Okay. Okay, what are some good accessories? What's good? I can make math homework, math homework plus, English homework, game soft, yin yang ba bagua furnace, magical broom, red agita, leaf fan, thousand rod, I can't make that, never mind. Pendulum, I can make one of. And then rabbit's tail. Oh. I need one more of those fuckers. Four leaf clover. Drop rate, max HP. Oh, that would be good, wouldn't it? I can make that after all. Make some clovers. Should I... Should I bother making the higher advanced one, or should I just get four regular ones? Because I... This is make the better ones? I can only make two of them, though. I'm one short? Oh, no. Hold on. I gotta go get one straight leaf. I gotta get one straight leaf. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll go get a straight leaf. <sighs> I have a feeling I know what, where I can get a, a leaf. It probably drops from the enemy with a leaf on its head. I'll get it. I'll be good. You're not gonna see Star Fox. You're not gonna see F-Zero. You're gonna see Dr. Mario. That's right, Dr. Mario Switch. It's coming. Get ready. Are you excited? Sploot? That's not a real game. Oh, there's there's also... What was that game called, chat? Triangle something? It was called Triangle something, yeah? What the fuck was that game called? But they, they showed that off, like... 
was that earlier this year? Triangle Strategy. Oh. Yeah, they showed that game off. I remember that. And I think it said something about 2022. So that's coming out next year? Maybe? Yeah, the last we saw of it, it was in its working title stage. So I wonder how that's going to turn out. I'm a little bit interested in it. However, I didn't play Octopath, so I'm not terribly interested in it. There you go, I did it. Alright. So, obviously, the plan now is to make some, uh, make some big leaves. Need 12 of them thangs. Uh, there we go. Octopath 2! Octopath was fun, but it was basically Bravely Default without the humor. I didn't play it. I wasn't interested in it, personally. I liked Bravely Default, though. Up to a certain point. There's an Octopath 2 coming out, yeah? Good reviews from the demo. Especially from the Fire Emblem crowd. It is, uh... Well, if it's good, it's good, right? Never played Bravely Default 2, or Bravely Second. I don't really understand where Bravely Second exists in the timeline, though, because... Bravely... Bravely Default, and then Bravely... Bravely Default ends, and it, it sets up Bravely Second. But then they were like, oh, by the way, Bravely Default 2, and I was like, what? Wait a minute, what happened to Bravely Second, then? Bravely Second is a direct sequel to the first one. Yeah, I know, because the first game ends and sets up for it. But then Bravely Default 2 is unrelated? Oh, okay, I see. I see, I see. You know what is cool? Uh, Bra N N Octopath Style? Octopath Style looks really nice. And they're redoing Dragon Quest 3 in it, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't think I'm gonna play it. But, Dragon Quest 3 is... Dragon Quest 3 is uh, the one where with Goku. Well, they're all Goku, but you know what I mean. But seeing that game remade in that, that format was like, oh, that's actually pretty, it looks pretty nice. I have no idea what that game looked like when it came out, though. But I like the Octopath art style a lot. Really Devolt 2 is another universe, but it's a new game coming that will get the characters together. Oh, no. Interdimensional crossover. Except it makes sense. I'm looking for Phoenix Downs. Because these birds dropped them. And I'm down to 25 and I need them because I can't play this game without the game playing it for me. It is a complicated relationship. I have 49 Phoenix Tails. So I need more. That's all. That's all it is. Just trying to get some Phoenix Tails. 40 minutes, chat. 40 minutes. Ding. Dong. Oh, I got two there. These, these are nice. These are nice. This isn't gonna take that long. I don't need 99, but I might as well get as much as I can, right? Avoid having to come back earlier. And then I gotta deal with stupid Kadama. Or whatever they call them in this fucking game. Only one that time. Disappointment in 40 minutes. Okay, if Nintendo actually put out a Direct that had four, nothing in it at all that was interesting to me, I would be impressed. Genuinely impressed. Because that would mean they would have to have nothing at all that is like, uh, first party. Or anything that is first party is just like, reeks of bad. Oh, I missed the bird. Oh, I'll get him on the way out. I'll get him on the way out. Oh. The real question is, what do they start with and what do they end with? Because there's a good chance... There's a good chance that Smash leads 
because Smash is always like a great opener. But there's also a chance they end with it. I don't really know what when they decide to do that, but if they open with it, if they open with it, they'll be like, yeah, Sakurai will talk about it later. But if they end with it, it'll be like, oh shit, everything you just saw in that direct, you no longer care about. Maybe it's how they feel about their own direct presentation, whether or not they want to put it up front or in the back. Maybe that's what it is. Remember, the last DLC character of Fighters Pass 1 got an entire uh, presentation to itself, and that was Byleth. So, maybe Nintendo, I don't really understand Nintendo's thought process for these things. Byleth was the one that got the big ol' their big ol' reveal. Sephiroth opened up. Sephiroth opened up, uh, his appearance. What the hell? Oh. So, 17.5 announcement for Switch. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it getting it getting on Switch right now. <laughs> I would worry about it coming out at all in general. <laughs> well, let's we'll see. We shall see. I don't have any expectations for the DLC character. I really don't. To be honest, I'm not really gonna miss the speculation once it's all said and done. Because some people want some whack-ass characters, man. Like, alright, so let's look at all the characters who have shown up as DLC characters so far. Alright, first party Nintendo character, uh, prominent character in their game or franchise. Alright, alright, I understand. So which character do you want? Oh, I want, I want, uh, I want the supporting character from Golden Sun. That, that guy. Give me the supporting character of, uh, of a, a niche JRPG. He, they should be in Smash Brothers. Because, because they, they deserve it. Because I said so. Now you can, you can hang on to whatever belief keeps you, puts you to bed at night. But, you know, if you get mad about it, that's when you probably need to take a chill pill. <laughs> Is that any better than Banjo? Oh no. You can't say that, man. You can't. Banjo is untouchable. You're not allowed to talk shit about Banjo. Can't happen. Then you get the then you get the wax, the wackos who were like, "I want an Echo Fighter DLC character." It's like, "No you don't." <laughs> no you fucking don't. Wouldn't it be cool if the last fighter pass was just fucking Dr. Luigi? So now you have you have Luigi again, but his grab is his grab is now back to normal, but he still can do the zero to death down throw on you. It's like, whoa, Dr. Luigi! Whoa, that's so sick! Oh man. This is the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night. We live in an age where people want to see imposter among us in the game. And you know what? We also live in an age where I don't see it as an entirely zero possibility. 17.5 will come out this month. Uh, why are you lying in my chat room? Hmm? Hmm? It's not coming out. You know what's coming out in eight days, nine days? The delay notice. Not the game. You simply need to accept that this is what's happening and you cannot do anything about it. Sorry! And goodbye. Silk Song? That doesn't exist. They made that up. Silk Song was a joke the developers made. They just wanted to see how excited people would get if they made more Hollow Knight. And then they were like, oh, that's amazing. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to new projects. No, no, no imposter among us. Oh, there's a new Tales game, right. I forgot about that. So, 
There you go. You you guys don't need Lloyd anymore. Stop asking for Lloyd. He's a DLC co he's a he's a me costume now. He's in the game. Quit asking for him. I swear, man, the same people be like, wow, look at all the characters with swords in the game. Be the same people be like, wow, what's one more sword character if it's a character I like? Insanity. It's insanity, dude. Stop giving me anime sword fighters, unless it's from a game I like, in which case it's fine. Amogus me would cause the internet to go crazy enough that it would just crash Twitter again like Steve. It would. It would. I, ha I highly doubt it's going to happen, but again, given how the nature of Smash Brothers, or how it has been, I cannot with 100% certainty say that it cannot happen. I firmly believe there is at least a iota of a chance that it can happen. And that's the part that scares me the most. <laughs> that it can happen. How did we get here? The last fight is gonna be OP. I really hope not. You know what's happening right now though? Currently Pyra and Mithra are in the spotlight. Pyra and Mithra are currently this this uh, ultimate Bayonetta. The character came out, they're really good, a lot of people are using them, and now that's that's where everyone's grievances lie. I think it's funny because that was literally Joker for like a year. And then Pyra and Mithra came out and it's like, oh shit, Pyra and Mithra, oh no, they're they're too good, that's it. Everybody's just gonna pick them and win tournaments now. It's happening. It's happening, folks. And now no one cares about Joker. Every game, every game needs a best character, and as far as I'm concerned, Pyra and Mithra are good characters, but I don't think they're, I don't think they're that high above everything else. Obviously there's some bullshit to them, but someone's gotta be good, right? I didn't like Bayonetta because Bayonetta could just like, Bayonetta didn't have to play the same game as you. Pyra and Mithra still have to play the same game as you. I feel the same way about Joker. Oh, right. Kazuya came out after Pyra and Mithra. I forgot about that. Well, he's kind of he's kind of cracked when he can go move, but otherwise he, he struggles. But he's got some shit. Got some hella sauce. But no, Bayonetta was a character that was not really, you know, you had two stocks, she could kill you off literally like anything she did, and she just didn't really have to play the same game as you. But meanwhile, you had to shit a brick every time you like even tried to interact with her, because she could turn her disadvantage into her advantage with the, a, quick, a click of a button. And it really was that easy. Pyra and Mithra still have to play the game. Granted, Mithra shits out of damage, because she has really great frame data, and then Pyra can kill you at 80, because... Because. But I do think they at least still have to play the game, so I, um, I don't really mind. Maybe I'm just jaded, that I just don't care, in general. But it's the same way with Joker. I, like, Joker... People said Joker was super good, overwhelming, overbearing, and there are a lot of elements of Joker that is that are pretty fucking wild. But for the most part, they're just kind of like, yep, that's that's how it be. I play against Brian, he hits me with like back air, back air, down air, and I'm dead at 50, and I'm just like, yep, that's that's how it goes sometimes. Joker is very good, yes. Joker is an incredibly good character alone, and Joker is an incredibly good character when Arsene comes out. He has a lot of strengths and very few weaknesses. That's what makes him a good character. But I think he's cool to watch. And I think he's entertaining. And I don't really, like, you know, I don't really mind that much. Kazuya can kill you pretty easily if he gets his hands on you. But otherwise, he struggles to get in. I like watching Kazuya, but I don't think I would ever want to play against a Kazuya. Because you, if, like, if they, if a good Kazuya can kill you off one interaction... Which means you never want to interact with them. So then, then you get that kind of gameplay, right? No one wants to interact with a character. No one wants to interact with a character that can kill you in one hit. 
Joker is more fun to watch versus Mithra. I actually agree with you, 100%. I do agree with that. I don't think Mithra is that entertaining to watch. I just don't think that she's, uh... I don't think she's as insane as Bayonetta was. And I hate that I have to I, I even say that, because I was of the belief that comparing Bayonetta to Brawl Meta Knight was a stupid thing. But, like, Joker is... Joker is very fluid to watch. He's fun to watch. He's cool. He's got a lot of different things he can do. And that's what makes him exciting to me. But Pyra and Mithra, I don't find terribly exciting, because... A lot of what Mithra does to get you to 60 is, well, pretty much the same, and they just kind of, you know, they just kind of put one hand on the controller, one hand on their, their lap, and then they get 60%. She's very effective, but I don't think she's overly flashy. Still, it's like, from a spectator's perspective, I, I could, I could deal, I could be, I would be happier if there was less of them, I suppose. And there were other characters, but I also think Palutena is one of the most boring characters in the entire series, and I would rather watch Mithra over Palutena. So, you can take my opinions as you want them. Because that's, that's just how it is. I don't think Palutena can do anything even remotely cool. So, watching her is just, it's just raw fundamentals, but she's boring. So, I don't like watching her at all. Everyone has their opinions. But yeah, the thing is, when a character is good, a character is played more. When a character is played more, they are represented more. And then you see them every time you turn on a stream, and after a while, people start getting sick of seeing them. Because everyone's playing them, and you know, this is from a spectator's perspective, that does get boring. The thing is... You shouldn't... You shouldn't not listen to spectators' opinions on these things, but you should only you should only give like five percent, maybe even less than five percent. Oh, cool. Oh, very cool. Okay, that was weird. Twenty-five minutes. That was weird. Anyway, what was I saying? You should take most spectator, uh, spectator whining with a grain of salt. But like, obviously, if a game reaches a point, if a game reaches a point in its competitive uh, history where ninety percent of the matches are that character, then that character is probably a problem. However, I don't think Pyre and Mithra have reached that point. Sure, I do think you have to see a lot of them in pools because they're good characters. But it's not like it's not like Street Fighter 2 Akuma stuff like that, right? Characters characters who so like thoroughly stand out on top that most of top level becomes dittos between said character. That's when maybe you need to start looking into that because what ends up happening is Sure, the spectators don't have to watch if they don't want to, but if that's all your game turns into, eventually people are going to stop wanting to play it. And then people are going to stop wanting to watch it. Every, every fighting game has a character like this. Pretty sure Street Fighter V, it was Abigail. I don't know if Abigail is still as a big a deal as, because it's been a long time and I don't really watch the game regularly. Smash 4, but every DLC starting with Cloud was top tier until Bayonetta happened. Not every DLC. What? It, here's how Smash 4 went. Smash 4 released and Diddy was everywhere. Diddy was the best character. The best and easiest character to use, because some characters had some shit, but Diddy Kong just had- also had some shit, but he had the easiest time with said shit. So he became the most prominent character. He is the one who, uh, originated the hoo-ha, the down throw up air. People just seem to dislike characters because of how they play in Smash and how they actually act in their OG game. Yeah, I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm one of them. I fucking hate Palutena! Character mad boring! 
They actually had to implement a patch into her kit to make her nair go faster because you sit there and get hit by it five fucking times to take 50%. So they sped the move up so I don't have to sit there for a long amount of time. That's a genius increase. That is a genius increase. Hey, if Raymond is a, if Raymond become, is comes and gets in the game and is like a piece of shit character, then I'm gonna I'm not gonna deny that. I didn't like uh, Rosalina in Smash Four, and I like Rosalina a lot. Rosalina had some serious dumb shit. Its name was Luma. Fucking Luma, Luma up air can kill you in 40 with rage. Because why not? What's wrong with Palutena? She's incredibly boring. She doesn't really have anything exciting she can do. She's just all raw fundamentals. Her back air and her dash attack having shield properties is obnoxious. And her nair is uh, like a free 50%. If you get hit by Palu's nair, then you take a lot of percent. And it's a great, it's a good combo tool. There's a lot of things her nair can do. It's very good. She has a lot of good buttons and good aspects to her. I also hate the player base for the most part because they act like the character isn't super good at all. They'll like whiff a grab mid stage and be like, this character sucks. It's insane. Paolo players will do anything in the world convince you that character isn't good and the character the character got nerfed and by nerfed I mean they had their grab range normalized and then it was like well there goes my character can't we can't win tournaments ever again nope Palu's dead now it's like calm down bro sorry you don't have a force choke anymore and you have to play the game like the rest of us either way she's just one of those characters that I don't I really like watching or playing so that's all <clears throat> She's got a good nair. And that nair is always the subject of some kind of conversation because it's either good or it's bad depending on who you ask. Alright, I can beat this guy this time. Watch. Here we go. Fuzzball go. She went from bad because no custom to good due to being boring to play. That's not because she's boring to play. It's just they made her kit better. Because her kit's not that different from how it, like, it smashed four, but the elements to it have improved because Palu had that back air and dash attack armor in Smash 4 and she also had the she also had a dash or not dash attack she had a her nair was not a combo tool necessarily her nair was a uh, what do you call it 20 minutes I'm gonna wrap it up in a second yeah Palutena was supposed to be a character you fitted with customs and when customs stopped being a thing They had to make her base moveset better and they did and she ended up being a pretty, a, a pretty good character Crown full of handmadeness There's nothing wrong with her being good as a character I just think that the elements of her that make her good are not very fun to deal with or watch because I as I said When I, I like playing Smash Brothers because Smash Brothers has a lot of potential to be exciting in ways that other fighting games cannot compare to. Because the idea of an increasing, uh, an increasing health bar, and the higher it gets, the more likely you are to die. But like, you can still, you can still die even if you're not at a high percent. Like, there's a lot of opportunity for some stuff to happen in Smash that can never really happen in fighting games. Which is an exciting aspect of it. But I don't think Palutena can do that at all. Palutena is a character who will just play really well and then, you know, turn it around and beat you, and that's fine. That's there's nothing wrong with that, but when I the way I play Smash Brothers, I just like hitting people and doing fuck ass loads of damage and killing them at like two two. Cause that's fun. I can make the tail now. Yeah, I got three of them, so probably. Probably. Twenty minute. Don't worry, it's coming. It's coming, shot. Don't worry. I'm not gonna miss it. Trust me. Just gonna get the rest of my stuff. That's all. <clears throat> but back to what I was saying, Smash Four. Diddy Kong was really good. 
Uh, Sheik was really good. Zero Suit Samus was really good. There was a period of time where, you know, once Diddy Kong was no longer the best character in the game, the top three was uh, Sheik, Zero Suit, and Rosalina, I believe, was like the the average like tier list. Battle of the Blondes, essentially. Those three characters were top of the tier list. Um, and then, you know, some of Hmm. Wow, I was surprised. Hi, how was the revenge? Actually, for some reason, we can't see- we couldn't see Cherno. Is that so? I know that you're feeling. But it's okay, we found out Cherno's been on the Northern Lake all the way. You guys are heading there now, huh? Please come back to us after a while. At that time, I'll be proud to answer the hero interview. I've acknowledged. I'm looking forward to it. Jeez. It's like a buzzard. The environment is getting set little by little. Let's go back to the Bamboo Grove. Gee, uh, another one! Hey, over here too. Hello, how about the revenge you guys did? I just talked to the Red Reporter. Please ask for details from her. Oh, I fell just one step short of her. I understand. We look forward to your continued patronage. <laughs> Boing. You should be interviewed by a lot of media to be widely known to the world. I can't take it anymore. Ah, we're back to mute. Alright. So, a small amount of progress made. I want to explore the rest of this coast next time, though. Before I move on with the Buni tale. So, I'm going to stop here because the direct starts soon. Excellent. Oops. Oops. Keep forgetting how this works. Two. All right. Well, you know, eventually I'll, I'll play this game, but right now it's playing itself a little bit. That's all right. I'm curious to see how it goes. I really am. Although I really do wish the English was a bit more uh, readable, I guess. Oh, uh, well, what can you do?